What is going on YouTube, it's your boy Willie Westside here bringing you back with another video today. Now today we are doing the obvious follow up to my last video on Vegito Blue Team Building and doing a Super Saiyan Rose Goku Black new updated optimal team and good team building video. So I want to go ahead and get this out of the way. This is probably your optimal team under Super Saiyan Rose Goku Black. Um, it would require you having two summonable LRs, uh, LR Broly and LR um, Rose Masu. Um, as you can see, Rose Goku Black and Rose Masu share six key links. Uh, Broly and Black share three key or three links, not key links. Sorry, just links in general. Um, and they're just gonna hit hard. Then you've got your three rotating units. You've got Support Darkness Toa, who's amazing. You've got your Omega Shinron, who debuffs your enemies and can double attack and do all his damage. You've got Kid Buu, who is the hardest hitting int unit. So that one was pretty pretty standard, but. Optimal doesn't always mean accessible, which is why we try and focus on things that you could actually theoretically run. And so here we have all of the units that you could theoretically run in a villain's team. And the big thing to note is that while Heroes was difficult, villains took a lot of time. <laughs> That's why this video is coming out two days after, not one day, because this one took me actually a good bit. I was sitting around with calculations. Um, I was doing a lot of stuff to try and figure out. Uh, which units would run here and it was hard. It was very very hard. So without further ado Let's go ahead and hop in. So we know Rose is going to be the head of this team It is a Rose team. You are going to want to run Super Saiyan Rose Goku Black. He's your lead all that kind of stuff So now we kind of have our strength pick in a sense out of the way It's not completely out of the way, but we know which strength unit we're gonna run and so we have um five other units to run through four other types. So let's figure everything out first. So we can go ahead and choose our physical type next. And so this one was difficult. All types are difficult, actually, except one. The uh, AGL is pretty easy to figure out. If you are going for the most damage possible, you are going to run Toa. Toa is not the most fun unit to run, but if you are going for the most fun and in, like good unit overall for your team, you will run AGL Darkness Toa. If you are on Global, you are never going to get AGL Darkness Toa, so you will keep Super 17 there. I'll go ahead and bring him back up, because you will not be able to run, um, uh, you're not going to be able to run AGL Darkness Toa on the Global, because she is uh, a Heroes unit, and Global does not have licensing for Heroes. So you will keep him on Global, her on JP. It was very easy to decide there. Everything else gets a little more dicey. So, we're gonna move on over to Intelligence. Now, as much as I like Celza, and I do kind of like this new Zamasu unit, neither of them are going to be good enough to warrant themselves a spot on this team. Celza is great for an extreme intelligence and super battle road. He boosts his own attack, he boosts his own defense, he's got a pretty good link set, and he uh, heals you up 10% as part of his passive pretty regularly. Um, but they're just not good enough to keep on. Same with Buhan. While Buhan used to be one of the best units in the game, arguably probably the best besides Super Vegito, his age is showing itself. His healing isn't as good. His, he's not hitting as hard as he used to. It's just not as good. So now it comes down to these two. Now you might be thinking, oh, well Kid Buu gets a uh, stacking on of it um, on uh, passive, but he doesn't have any great key links. Frieza has some key links and he gets 150 flat. But the problem is, Frieza has great key links for Frieza's two teams, Resurrected Warriors and uh, Tournament of Power. Frieza does not have good key links outside of that. In fact, his key links kind of suck. It's Revival, Strongest Claim in Space, and Tournament of Power. So he could theoretically be getting seven key if all of his links were active, but no one's ever going to activate those links other than a Angel Golden Frieza. So, they're go both going to be about the same. The big difference is Kid Buu, I believe, gets big bad bosses, um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and I don't think Frieza does, because Frieza at this point is not a big bad boss. So, because of that, Kid Buu actually puts out more damage, therefore Kid Buu is a better unit to run, which is very weird to say, but you also have to keep in mind that because of Rosé's passive, where he's giving you all of your units three key, Rosé will be on every single rotation. You're not going to struggle for key in that last slot like you normally would. So rather than needing six key to get off a super, Boo's only going to need three. That's going to be very important. So now we move on to, uh, let's do strength next. So we don't know, actually hold off on strength. I apologize, that was a mistake. Let's do physical next. So, 
physical. You now have these options. So you have the support Ginyu, the uh, the regular Goku Black, Cooler, Shinron, and Broly. Now I put Broly on there for my sake because I'm a big Broly fanboy. Um, I actually he was the only God lead in the 70% meta that I had for the longest time, but. Broly doesn't hold up. He didn't hold up back then. He's not holding up now. Excuse me, that was gross sounding. Um, so now we've got Cooler, Omega Shinron, Ginyu, and Goku Black. On JP, Goku Black is not that great. And on Global, Goku Black is great in a physical environment, but not in a mono uh, villains environment. Because Rose is already giving the three key, you don't need both of them to give three key, you're going to have relevant links, all that kind of stuff. So you really don't need Goku Black. I mean, on JP, you wouldn't run him anyways, because he's not that great. Now it comes down to Cooler and Omega and Ginyu. Now, in terms of giving you the most damage, Ginyu's interesting, because he does have a support passive, but it's a flat support passive, and, so, and flat passives don't uh, hold up. Ginyu's is a 7,777 uh, boost to all of his allies' attack. That sounds great because it is a support, but you don't need it. And his key, while interesting and would be helpful if villains still had a key issue, is not really necessary because Rosé is supplementing all that with his own key. So we can go ahead and get rid of Ginyu. Now between the two of Cooler and Shinron, that's actually an interesting debate. Cooler and Shinron are almost the same unit. The difference is Omega is a little bit better. They both have the same key modifier. They both have the exact same passive in terms of the additional attack. Omega gets a higher attack up, but uh, Cooler gets a defensive buff, but Omega debuffs all of his enemies. They're almost the same unit. Omega just does everything Cooler does a little bit better. Now, he's not as tanky in and of himself, but Rose gives all of your defensive units an extra 50% in defense. So you don't need Cooler if you're building the strongest team because Omega is just better. Now here are our remaining units that you could run. Um, you've got two strength and three tech. And we know we're going to need a tech, so we'll focus on that next. Um, the problem is your two tech options are really, really good. Um, and that's a problem. I say two. I know I've got Super Saiyan 3 Broly on the screen. You're not going to run Super Saiyan 3 Broly. He's a great unit for a Super Saiyan 3 category because you need to be below a certain key threshold. But in terms of a villain's team, he's just a liability. Um, he's going to be in third rotation, which isn't bad because he's getting a third rotation hit. But you don't want to take any supers on the back end and get out by Broly because he's not taking any... Um, any hits before he super attacks. So you just don't want to run him. And Cell, once again, I'm sorry to say, is going to be gone. He was on there for, um, my heart went out to him, but he's just not going to make it. So now you've got an option of running two tech units and one strength, or, or running two tech units and one strength unit being Rose, or two strength units being Rose and uh, Janimba, and one tech unit. Now I did the calculations, and believe you me, this one was the hardest one yet because I very much wanted to keep Janimba on there. I just think Janimba adds more to your team's overall versatility than just about any unit you're going to have. His dodging and um, uh, guard activating passive is one of the best in the game. You're going to want to leave him on your team. I think that he's not going to hit the hardest, therefore would not make a lot of people's optimal lists, but he is just an amazing unit I think you're going to want. What he does is invaluable to your team. In terms of constructing everything, all the other units serve a very functional role. Um, Rose, he not only buffs his own attack, but he gives your units key and buffs their defense. That's pretty cool. Kid Buu, He's a hard hitter, but he heals himself too, and that's kind of cool. Omega, additional attacks, debuffing, attack up, that's cool. You've got uh, Super 17, who is interesting to run on this team um, because he's going to be in that third slot, and you're going to have to keep... He reduces damage, but he's also going to stack up his own attack eventually up to 120%, meaning he does actually hit pretty hard on uh, at SA-10, and he's very underrated in my opinion, but it's, it's interesting to try and run him. Then you're going to have your tech units, and the problem with tech is that it's just, it's hard hitters. Now, both of these units are amazingly hard-hitting units, and it's really impressive that they're that hard-hitting. 
Mass Saiyan has a flat um, attack increase, but his attack increase is 50,000, and that's pretty monumental. Uh, Merge Zamasu has a 120% up, which is pretty monumental itself. Merge Zamasu has a formal super attack, Mass Saiyan doesn't. But they're almost the same unit in a way. After doing the calculations, I can tell you it comes down to a hundred thousand um, damage difference, which is not that much, all things considered. But Merge Zamasu wins out, and that's just because Merge Zamasu has big bad bosses, which is one of the best links in the game. It is shared by almost all the units, except poor little Super 17 and Darkness Toa, because Darkness Toa doesn't share a link with anyone on this team, if you look. Um, it is just an incredible, incredible link, and I, when I was doing the calculations, I estimated it to be up about 80% of the time, because it's a very easy key threshold to maintain, with Kid Buu healing you to make sure you're not dying, Janimba blocking and make a debuffing, you're just going to have some great, great rotations, and Merge Zamasu is contributing a good bit of damage. Now, the problem with this setup is your rotations are going to be a little little wonky. To get the most damage, you're going to want to keep Omega and Rosé and Kid Buu in Rosé. They share um, a few damage links, so that's pretty cool, um, and Kid Buu should be getting off a of super. If you're going for consistency and super attacking, you're going to put um, Merge Zamasu in that first slot. They actually share a good bit of links, so I bet he boosts Rosé's damage more than I'm estimating, because um, I wasn't estimating Mass Saiyan or Merge Zamasu's effect on other units, only them themselves. Um, but yeah, it was a very, very close call, so if you have one and not the other, you can easily sub one out for each other. But yeah, Merge Zamasu definitely earns his spot on this team. Now, let's talk about, like we did in the last one, the one you're going to have the most copies of. And if you're global, Goku Black's making this team. You probably have 50,000 copies of Goku Black. I have not gone hard for Goku Black since when he first came out and I got one of them, and I already have a dupe. In fact, I don't really pull many banners where Goku Black is featured. So, Goku Black, a lot of people, if you're really invested in this game, will probably have rainbowed, so globally he's going to be there. But let's, let's focus on um, JP and that kind of stuff. So, a lot of people didn't pull for villains, period. And that is sad, but it's probably true. Um... A lot of villains got overlooked. Cooler got overlooked when he dropped on JP. Um, Kid Boo, no one wanted. No one still wants. I have him. I have a dupe with him on Global, and I love him, but no one shares that same Kid Boo love. Uh, Super 17, no one really loved, and he's rarely back, so he's hard to get. But if you're going to have units, you, everyone obviously is going to have the new Go, uh, Super Saiyan Rose Goku Black. Everyone went for him. Everyone wants him. Everyone's got him. They're probably also going to have Omega. I'm going to put Omega down here, because Omega was a very popular unit when he came out. He released alongside Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, so you probably got to do some of them. He's very fun to run, and you're likely going to be able to run him, which is a very big thing for this part of the analysis. No one is going to have Darkness Toa. She's a good unit, but she came around one banner. No one summons on Heroes banners. They're, they're just kind of a trap, and you no one has her. Let's be honest. I mean, so we're going to kind of ignore her for now. Angel Golden Frieza, I think a lot of people have, and I think a lot of people have probably duplicates of him, because he's such a hype character. When he came back in the 20 Minute Power arc, everyone was excited, everyone was stoked. So, I think most people are going to have him, and that fills out and that satisfies your intelligence slot. Not a lot of people have Celza, I have Celza, I have a dupe of Celza, I love Celza, not a lot of people are going to have him. Um, no one has Kid Buu, people have Buhan, but like I said earlier, he's getting too old. People will probably have Strength to Nimba and probably have Strength to Nimba dupes. He dropped alongside Super Gogeta when they came back. It was amazing. Super Janimba's banner was incredible. Everyone was hype about Super Janimba. Everyone's probably got Super Janimba, and I think that's fair to say. So you've got these four. Whoop. Well, I'm going to um, ignore that. Hopefully it won't restart by the end of this video. So in terms of Mask Saiyan or Merge Zamasu, Merge Zamasu's been around more. Mask Saiyan is not Doken Fest exclusive, meaning everyone's had a chance to pull him. And I think people went harder on Super Saiyan 3's banner than they did on Merge Zamasu's banner, which released alongside the Akari Trunks. And I think it's fair to say, in my opinion, that people have Mask Saiyan and not Su uh, Merge Zamasu. Because, like I said, you can get him from World Tournament summons, or at least you used to be able to. No one has Super Saiyan 3 Broly. Um, he was just around a good bit more. Now, the problem is, 
no one has an extreme AGL unit that's any good. If we look and we sort, I'll redo this real quick, um, and only do extreme AGL and sort by, uh, we'll sort by rarity, not a lot of people have extreme AGL units. Super 17 is probably the one they have. Um, we'll go ahead and get rid of a lot of stuff in here. Um, but he's the only really great option. You can run this Golden Frieza, the tank one that reduces everything by 90%, kind of scrolling down this list. No one has anything. Um, and that's a problem because you don't really have great options. So if you want to run Extreme AGL, I'm a big believer in Extreme AGL. You don't have much. You might honestly consider running LR Androids in that case. Um, Super 17, I have a dupe of. I love Super 17. I didn't spend any money chasing him, and I happened to get two of them. Um, and I love running his team, but not a lot of people do. So this is Villains is a hard team to run based on the non. Uh, like, you don't have to go after it. Like, if you don't go after an extreme LGL unit, you're not going to be able to run anything on this team. So, hopefully, in this banner, you've pulled uh, Super 17, because he's the only really good option you've got. Um, you, LR Androids, they just did that campaign. They're pretty good units, but there's not been a lot of love for AGL, and I'd love to see that more going forward, because AGL is one of my uh, favorite types. It's my second, my top is physical. Um, but yeah, I do, I really do hope they show a little more love to the AGL side of the game. But that's where I'm leaving with you uh, today, guys. So, like I always say here, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below. Thanks, thanks for everyone that came out and supported this video from the Doken Battle Reddit. I'll leave that linked in the below like I always do. And like we always say here on the channel, guys, we hope to see you around sometime.